Hey peeps, I'm gonna tell you about my first day on the new DVO 38 fork. This is what you're gonna get, a very well packaged box. To be clear, this is a 180 millimeter super light version, so it just has a conventional air spring in it. But watch the video to find out why that conventional air spring is absolutely amazing. The fit and finish, the build quality, the paint quality on this fork are outstanding. The logos on the fork have a heat transfer, so they're on there for life. You can only put stickers over the top of the existing logos, so that's one thing to note if you're a sticker fiend. Because this is an SL version with a more conventional air spring, it just has regular style tokens and it takes up to four. The other item in the box is the bolt-on fender and it's a little bit on the smaller side, but it does bolt on, so that's cool. So heads up, it does not come with a star nut inside the box. I was a little bit disappointed, but I don't know if that's normal practice as I don't buy new forks on the regular. So in person, this arch on the fork just really pops out. You're like, wow, that thing looks way overbuilt. But hey, remember bikes are getting up to 60 pounds now, like my bike, and this is a awesome feature to have. A welcome addition to your 180 millimeter single crown fork is a pinch bolt on the bottom to center it on the wheels. The 38 Onyx has quite the updated compression lever. And that's a good thing because if you were familiar with their older lever, it was not the best design, but I can tell you the older compression damping in this fork was really good. Checking out the bleeder valves, there's no button to press down. You're gonna have to put a wrench on it or a four millimeter Allen key to purge the air out of it. Maybe they'll give you some buttons for it later, we'll see. There may be a reason for this, but personally, I don't like the floppy sag indicator O-ring and when they get old, it gets even worse. I hope it's straight. <sighs> to pay homage to Sam Pilgrim, we have to scrape this on the concrete. Boy, I think I did a pretty good job. So the rebound clicks aren't super defined. 25 clicks of rebound. So there's 37 clicks of high speed compression, but you're supposed to measure these in full rotations. So that's like six full rotations. There's about four clicks, five clicks of low speed compression, the center knob. The low speed compression makes a loud popping noise and the other two adjustments, high speed compression and rebound don't make much of a click. So pay attention. The self-centering axle is pretty standard operating procedure. Basically lock the wheel in and then tighten this up every time you put a new wheel on the bike and sometimes they can rattle loose. So interesting, on this 38 fork, we have a five millimeter axle. So basically you only need one tool to put the wheel on instead of two like most forks. Inside the lower leg, we have some notching and some paint, and I honestly have no freaking idea what's the benefit. So if you do, please leave a comment. The fork comes in at five pounds, 10 ounces, which is pretty standard for your 38 millimeter stanchion big boy fork. The fender it comes with has three bolts and some devoted bolt holes inside the lower legs to hold it on. As you can see, it's a little bit on the shorter side and it's February and it rains a lot where I live, so I will be swapping it out. I'm gonna put this monkey nuts fender on. It's from England and it never stops raining there and I've ran them before and they're super awesome. Linked in the description. The only problem with the monkey nuts fender, it's an absolute pain in the ass to put on the fork because it has Velcro straps, but those Velcro straps are far less likely to scratch the paint on your shiny new fork. On the front of my bike, I have a 200 millimeter center line brake rotor. If you look here closely, you can see the brake pad protruding above the rotor and the caliper is mounted directly on the fork. 
So this fork is not compatible with 200 millimeter rotors. You have to have a 203. This is kind of a bummer, unless you run mismatch rotors like myself and I can just swap them out. The super light version of the 38 Onyx features a cassette tool to remove the top cap. I basically pulled it off and there's no tokens installed from the factory. You have to add them in later. So here's the plan. I'm going to put directly the recommendations from DVO into the fork and let you know if it's a set it and forget it. The recommended air pressure was 71 and that's pretty low pressure and let me tell you from experience the lower the pressure in a fork typically the harsher it is on your hands but let's find out. The recommended rebound was 18 out of 25 clicks which is pretty darn slow but to be expected when you're a big boy. This is the only fork I've ever seen that gives a high speed compression recommendation and it's basically telling me to give it two full turns of high speed compression. I found it best to get a little marker just so you know where you are when you do a full rotation. There's nothing wrong with using one click at a time, but it's gonna be a very fine adjustment. With only five clicks of low speed compression, I just gave it two and let it be. Well, the sound that comes out of this fork is pretty unique. Here's my first hook to flat. Basically, I know if I need to add high speed compression or tokens by going off that jump. And I definitely am going to back off the high speed compression to the full open setting. So resetting the O-ring for the next section of hook to flat. Coming in as hot as I humanly can. Let's go off these roots and see how she feels. Super progressive fork. Progressive meaning really hard to find the bottom of the travel. This is what you want when you're hard charging enduro riding. You can't have a too soft of a fork. I was like, yeah, this fork's awesome, but so are most 38 millimeter stanchion forks. The first thing that really stood out to me on this fork, it's amazing small bump sensitivity with that hard charging this. That's a super hard combo to get. So jumping, yeah, this is a good fork, very predictable. And I accidentally kind of overshot that jump and landing was like a complete breeze. And once you feel all that confidence, you start to push the bike further and further. And you're like, yeah, let me find another huck to flat. Cause you're really confident with that fork. So I have the rebound a little bit too fast, but it is definitely an awesome set it and forget it fork. I just had to open the high speed compression up because my skills don't demand any high speed compression. With new suspension, it's always best to run the same trail over and over and over. So basically going down this amateur jump line again, I decided to hook to flat as hard as I could. And I was like completely confident. I was like, that was pretty awesome. Now when it comes to high speed, everything you'd expect from a 38 millimeter stanchion fork, but the fork is super playful and poppy and jumps. It's not just like all downhill, amazing on blue flow trails. So basically it's a pretty amazing fork, but I have an awesome way to best explain it to people who have never rode one. The Fox 38, it's an amazing fork. Amazing on pure downhill lines, but does sacrifice some of its poppiness because it's so plush. The RockShox Zeb, let me explain. It's very sporty and firm. Lacks small bump sensitivity, but the most amazing jumping fork you can possibly ride. The DVO Onyx 38 is the perfect middle ground. It has small bump sensitivity like Fox, but it also pops and plays like RockShox. Now you can't get everything in one fork. It is the perfect middle ground. So that air spring in the DVO 38 is absolutely magic. Now you have to click the video on the screen to see what DVO is all about. 